I guess it's a liberal's world, and sadly, we're just living in it, a world in which they try to control our minds and our bodies to control what we say, think, write, and talk about in a world in which they try to make us suffer into submission. Well, it's a liberal world order, didn't you know? What do you say to those families who say, listen, we can't afford to pay four eighty-five a gallon for months, if not years. This is just not sustainable. Good question. Well, what you heard from the president today was a clear articulation of the stakes. This is about the future of the liberal world order, and we have to stand firm. But at the same time, what I'd say to that family and to Americans across the country is you have a president administration that is going to do everything in its power to blunt the, those price increases and bring those prices down. What was that all about? Barack Obama, Dr. Fauci, AOC, George Soros. That's what it's all about, right, Joe Biden? Make Americans suffer as much as possible, whatever has to happen, right, Mr. President? How long is it fair to expect American drivers and drivers around the world to pay that premium for this war? As long as it takes. As long as it takes. After Donald Trump took office in 2017 and after eight years under President Barack Obama, who worked very hard to undo American pride, American exceptionalism, and American strength, Donald Trump took over the White House and worked for four years to bring those things back to this country, and he did. But the left just couldn't take it. They were too prosperous. Things were starting to make sense again. We were getting better. The fabric of the country was being restored. But those things just get in the way of that. Right there, folks, the liberal world order. Look at those faces. What Joe Biden's advisors, Brian Deese, said today put a very clear and distinct stamp on what the left wants to do to this country. And he was very clearly delivering the messaging of his leader, President Joe Biden, Joe Obama. And also, no surprise whatsoever, by the way, CNN's Victor Blackwell didn't even flinch when he said it. And Blackwell didn't even follow up with another question about that. He went on to a completely different topic. Liberal world order. Conspiracy theory, folks. This is not a new concept, by the way, by any stretch. Here is Joe Biden back in 2017 warning the country that what Barack Obama worked so hard on for eight years was being undone by who? Donald Trump, of course. Folks, this breaking down of the international and national norms is the glue that holds the liberal world order together and holds together our system. That is what is being attacked now, and that's what's most dangerous. You, 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 you brain-dead SOB. It's not okay. There is no liberal world order to hold together. Folks, we've been talking about this for months here on The Balance. This concept isn't new, and it's also far-reaching. Back in May at the World Economic Forum, WEF, in Davos, which is certainly part of the liberal world order, new world order, tomato, tomato, a giant pharma company CEO talked about making us compliant through a pill. It is a basically biological chip that it is in the tablet. And once you take the tablet and dissolves into your stomach, sends a signal that you took the tablet. So imagine the applications of that, uh, compliance. Ah, this little pill, take the tablet. It goes into your stomach lining. The compliance we can dictate. An executive at the world's largest online retailer talked about tracking us. We're developing through technology an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm. Stay tuned. We don't have it operational yet, but this is something that we're working on. See that? See what he did there? He hid it between underneath, behind carbon footprint. And what they want to do is track everything you do, what you eat, where you go. A Norwegian finance CEO said we just have to suffer for a while in order to make this transition to green energy. We need to accept that there will be some pain in the process. Uh, the pace that we need will 
uh, will open up for missteps. Mm. Uh, it will open up for uh, shortages on energy. It will create inflationary pressures. And maybe we need to start talking about that, that that pain is actually worth it. Thanks, Captain Obvious. That pain is actually worth it. That part, though, make the people suffer for an agenda. Who cares? We need to accept that there will be some pain in the process, she says. Do you see what's happening? That in order to achieve this new world order, this new liberal world order, we need the people. The people need to suffer for the, quote, greater common good. We already know full well what this suffering is like right here in America under the lack of leadership of the supposed leader of our country. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm the president of the United States of America. Oh, God, don't remind that us. That makes me the best messenger. Ugh, best messenger of what? Sleeping aids? Well, Americans don't need this type of messenger any longer. Americans don't need this lack of leadership from a man who is president in title only. Actor John Voight voiced so eloquently and so passionately what Americans are feeling. Yesterday he did this in his call for the impeachment of President Joe Obama, Joe Biden. We have a troubled nation with much horror from these criminals that are ruining lives. We must stop this now. We must bring back our nation's safety. We're all feeling very unsafe. We're all angry. And let's remember why. It starts with the seat of the President of the United States. He has wronged this nation's glory. He has taken down our morals, our true gift of the land of the free. He must be impeached. We cannot wait another second having him dictate our path. Yeah. Thank you, John Voigt. Thank you for saying it, for calling out Joe Biden and his war on this country. He does not love Americans, Biden does. And Joe Biden clearly does not love this country. And this is a typical liberal stance. They seem to love the concept of humanity. They just cannot stand the people who actually make up the vast humanity. Their plan to save the world actually hurts the people they claim they will help. They oppose genetically modified foods, even though these foods help stop malnutrition in places that have harsh growing conditions. They push electric cars, even though the poor would be unable to afford these cars. They push substandard public schools while they send their children to private schools. They oppose charter schools and vouchers because, of course, education is the greatest antidote to poverty, right? They demand strict gun laws while they live in well-protected places with little fear of crime. The wealthy hire bodyguards to protect them while most people have to fend for ourselves. They support the Green New Deal. Higher gas prices don't bother them at all. But lower income families have to spend greater, greater portions of income on gas. They support defunding the police while crime runs rampant in our poor neighborhoods. Now, with the crisis in Ukraine, food prices are rising with a shortage of fertilizer. Experts recommend building fertilizer factories in Africa, but European Union bureaucrats are concerned that these fertilizer factories will increase global warming. So instead, millions of Africans must starve to prevent environmental crises one, two, three hundred years down the road. The great Winston Churchill, once prime minister of the United Kingdom, once gave his opinion on Vladimir Lenin, one of the founding fathers of the Russian Revolution, a leftist movement saying his purpose to save the world, his method to blow it up. And that sums it up. That sums up liberals and their liberal world order. Make people suffer so they bend to the will of the government, their agenda, their new world order. The left doesn't like America. They certainly don't like Trump voters. You know, more than half the country. Well, we're all deplorables. We're the dark and scary MAGA movement trying to mess with the liberal world order. Conservatives, the MAGA movement, the red wave, these things stand in their way. This movement is destructive to their liberal new world order. Don't you see? The left so threatened by it that they've tried to brand MAGA as bad at every turn from the very top down. The other path is the ultra MAGA plan put forward by congressional Republicans. Yeah, OK, over and over again. Look, this is not your father's Republican Party. This is a different deal. It really is. I've worked with a lot of honorable Republicans, very conservative Republicans over the year when I was a senator. But this is the MAGA gang. This is the MAGA crowd. I really mean it.
<laughs> it's a little, a little late now. The cat's out of the bag because Americans see what's happening, a dwindling food supply, crime and killing, historic inflation, a world we can't afford to live in. The left does not care about regular Americans. They hate America and Americans. They care only for what they believe in and for their liberal world order they want to create for all of us. Russian author Dostoevsky once said, I love humanity. It's people I can't stand. Liberals love humanity as a whole. It's just the people they so clearly hate.